is a distinguished professor, SIC Endo the chair and the former chair of the Department of Nano Engineering at the UCSD. He is also the director of the UCSD Center of Wearable Sensors and co-director of the UCSD Center of Mobile Health Systems and Applications. So he, Professor Wang, has published more than 1,200 papers, 12 books, and he holds more than 13 patents. His H index is more at least 195. And uh, he received two ACS national awards. He got a lot of awards, and uh, he is the true pioneering leader in the biosensors and the wearable devices. And uh, let's welcome Professor Wang to get the presentation. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be in this beautiful institute and be with your old friends. Your friends will talk, as you mentioned, we have a big operation. We work also on nanorobot and nanomachine. And most of my group working now on wearable sensor, we take off, or a biomarker monitor. So this is our beautiful campus in La Hoya, where is the paper. And uh, let's get started. So we are in the... Back. Let's move the slide. Well, before. Suppose. Okay, so we are in the digital revolution. We are trying to combine biomedical and uh, digital to improve the quality of life, wellness, nutrition, and medicine. Get continuous monitor any time, any location. Hopefully, we'll change the life, better prevention, better compliance, and better diagnostic. Now, the early work in the last decade focused on the vital sign, a physical uh, parameter, ECT, temperature. What is missing, we want to go beyond the vital, beyond the physical activity, steps, mobility, and to do the molecular information, the chemistry, to capture molecular data from the body, non-invasive, continuously. In this case, to get to personal, personal nutrition, personal wellness, and personal medicine. Getting the molecular data continuously, non-invasively. So what is existing now is sensor for physical uh, device, uh, as I mentioned, steps, mobility, temperature, ECG, but what is missing is the molecular information. This is what we will want to fill the gap, getting information on biomarker, ranging from glucose for diabetic, alcohol, lactate for sport, cortisol for stress, and many, many more. This is a great opportunity, but it's also a major challenge because uh, that's why we don't have any wearable yet for biomarker challenges of stability, biofouling, compared to the physical uh, monitoring. So this is our vision for 10 more years, to shrink the complete lab. You have this big lab, but now we move it to the skin or into the mouth. So every, all the big lab you have upstairs will shrink it to 10 years. Instead of many benches, we have a micro-channel micro can do the diagnostic on the skin or inside the mouth. And it gives you and uh, check the engine, like on my car, in case of any problem, will tell you if any problem, onset of a disease or any other emergency and disorders. So this is the vision for 2035. And the advantage, as I said, we get continuous chemical monitoring 
getting this rich inside not only one time but the trend and pattern profile do it non-invasively without piercing the blood in this way changing the way we have the wellness and nutrition and health monitor better compliant sense medicine telemedicine lower cost to improve the quality of life so but we have many challenges as we say we have issue of stability of the sensor. These are uncontrolled conditions. It's not like in the lab, we have room temperature. You go out in the desert, you are running different temperature, and the enzyme or the aptamer don't like the changing temperature. You need to validate it compared to the gold standard, the blood safety. So if you do it in the eyes or in the, like the mouth, also the scope. A lot of the uh, normal assay, like immunoassay, they are not reversible. And they have many complex steps and washing steps. They are not amenable to continuous on-body operation. Challenges of compliance with the scheme, meeting the energy demand, big data, data security, data safety, and so on. So we use electrochemical device uh, like this uh, glucose CGM from Dexcom. Electrochemistry have the not only portability, low power requirement, low, low cost, but also have high performance, sensitivity, selectivity, and speed. There are some examples. In my review in Nature Biotech three years ago, we showed the history of biosensor from the first glucose 1962, 61 years ago, and during the 70s, moving to immunoacer, glucose strips in the 90s, DNA biosensor in late 90s, and to wearable in the last uh, decades. So if you visit my lab, you see this mannequin. I have two mannequins, one for energy, one for sensor, different wearable device on the skin, textile, on glove, in the house contact lens or different biomarkers. So we focus on non-invasive monitoring using four different biofluids. Sweat, saliva, ISF, and tears. We also monitor the surrounding environment, security application. Different mm -hmm. platform, again, tattoo, textile, mouse guard, contact lens, micro needle, using this non-invasive monitoring, capturing molecular information, a wide range of metabolites, electrolyte, drug of abuse, stress biomarker like cortisol, nutrition, vitamin, mineral, cytokine, neurotransmitter, chemical agent, toxic metal, all non-invasively and continuously. So, to talk about the wearable electrochemical sensor, we need to find with the body. We need to uh, make them flexible, stretchable. We rely on skin printed technology, like this glucose strip you get in CVA. They're all based on skin printing of the electrodes. So we use, but we print on a flexible substrate or on textile. So here we print a array of electrodes for. Uh, the Navy for different injury. This is hepatic brain injury, soft tissue injury, liver injury. Eight different sensor array on the Gore-Tex. Uh, we have the, the well, these are the working electrode in a bra, in the black, then the silver, the contact, the, the dialectic. So we have the mask with the stencil, different pattern pattern of the working electrode, here we print the carbon, then we print the silver, then we print the dielectric. We put this in the dielectric, then we transfer it to the substrate. But we have problem. Traditional electrochemistry is very rigid. You see the glass pH, the battery, the rotating electrode. These are all bulky, rigid, the planar. Our body, if you visit the San Diego Zoo, we have the flamingo. Flamingo are very flexible, stretchable. So we need to bridge the gap in the softness of biology and the rigidity of electrochemistry by developing a flexible and stretchable device. 
So we rely on uh, flexible material and stretchable structure to have device that can fold, can can stretch, can self-repair. So we want to stretch our device, to twist it, to bend it, like uh, what you expect on the body. We use different ink. The ink can endure the stress, eye stretching to 300%. The serpentine structure also can stretch, can twist the textile, so on. So you can see the stencil of this uh, serpentine structure that we transfer. These are the silver line, and these are the carbon electrode. They're connected. You can see here the result: the, the silver serpentine, the working electrode, all on the flexible. We we put the ink. We push it with the with it, we transfer it to the substrate. And then we have two dimensions of uh, stretchability. One is the structure, the serpentine can unwind. So this is the, the structural stretchability. And the second one is the material, the ink formulation. Give you another dimension of stretchability. So initially, you have the serpentine is unwind, you get two to 50%. And then this is the maximum, then the material start to play up to 500%. So you go from this one centimeter to five centimeter, combining the structure and the material here on textile, you see serpentine and wind on the bandage and so on. So we incorporate different uh, elastomer like Ecoflex or polyurethane in the ink to impart stretchability up to 500%. So you can do it on the skin, you see, you can twist it, you can stretch it, you see the serpentine, the working electrode, and you can see in this video, you push it 100%, 200%, you can twist it, and you keep the conductivity, you keep the stretchability, pushing to the limit without compromising the performance. It's a remarkable performance. You can do, again, the island bridge approach. So this is what they call island bridge. The island are not stretchable. These are one millimeter functional disc, but the bridges are stretchable. So this device, you can do it on textile, like here. The bridges from the silver and the island from carbon, or you can do it on a tattoo. And again, keeping 300-400% stretchability, you can do sensor, you can do batteries, biofuel, and And if you stretch too much, 600%, you can have a crack. You're also adding a self-healing capability into the material, like this magnetic particle. So if you have a crack, you have two magnets attracting to each other. In five seconds, you get back the capability. So it's self-healing intrinsically by adding this magnetic particle in the ink, you can have repeated cracking, and again, every time, five seconds, you get the repair, up to three, four millimeter crack, all, you get it back in five seconds. So we have all this material capability. Now we can move to the sensor on, the, on textile, under the skin, so on, to do the biomarker monitoring. So the skin is the gateway to our body. The skin can approach the sweat, you can approach the ISF and access uh, multiple biomarkers on the surface, under the surface. Again, building our lab on the skin vision, a uh, complete electronic uh, skin in the future. So we can use the direct measurement on sweat, also extract the ISF or putting the micro needle. But you can also extract the ISF using reverse ionic to access the ISF. So we started again uh, 11 years ago, going to the beach in San Diego, getting this tattoo paper, and we are printing our electro beautiful flower on the tattoo paper, and then we transfer it to the skin. So we have this, the three electrode working reference counter, make a nice flower, you see. Or we can have a smiley pH sensor, these are the two electrodes, this is a pH sensor on the skin. So we combine this uh, flexible tattoo, which are stretchable with the screen printing, 
uh, to get the good electrochemistry. So this is the process. We print on the tattoo paper and then we transfer it to the skin. And you see this beautiful flower. It takes one minute, you transfer it. You can use it all day or three days. As you can see, here we have the for glucose, non-invasive glucose on the tattoo paper, and this is the way it looks for reverse iontophoretic of ISF. So you peel it, you print on the tattoo paper, remove the cover, and you transfer the tattoo paper to the skin. This is slow motion. Usually it takes 10 seconds. Rinse it with water, and you can use it for two, three days. The electronic is reusable, so we'll remove it. Then we have the enzyme is already functionalized. And we put the electronic, it will be reusable with magnetic connection. And this will allow you to do the glucose or alcohol, as you'll see. But we started this is, uh, 12 years ago with lactate, sweat lactate for fitness and performance. This is my nano engineering department. These are the three electrodes for engineering. This is the working electrode reference and crown. We put the enzyme, lactate oxidase. This is in vitro testing. You see the calibration, one to 20 millipolar and ampermetric. Then you start to exercise. You generate the sweat after 10 minutes. You get the lactate profile. This profile reflects your fitness level. The muscle fatigue, so lactate, again, reflect your uh, fitness level exercise intensity. You see, this is control. Without the enzyme, there is no signal. Different subjects have different profile, depending on the fitness level. And glucose is the big one, and uh, we want to do glucose non-invasive or minimally invasive on the skin, again, using direct uh, sweet measurement or uh, extracting the ISF or putting micro needle. This is the same tattoo I showed you before when we is extract the ISF for two minutes after the big uh, breakfast. You apply this for two minutes, you extract the ISF, you have glucose oxidase, and in three minutes you get the glucose. We have modified the electrode with the and you see before the meal and after the meal you get big increase because glucose. And this is the one I show you. You put the flexible electronic, you can do the ion to and the sensing in this two-minute extraction from uh, the museum in Vienna, in Austria, diabetic. Uh, so this is uh, the flexible, reusable electronic on polyamide, Capton. It can do all the steps, the iontophoretic, extra wireless communication, if the battery all incorporated in the flexible on the Capton, and you see it for glucose. Also for alcohol, oh, this is also the data for day-long monitoring. So we use this every, every 20 minutes. You see the validation with blood glucose meter. This is a lunch, this is dinner, and you can see the similarity to the blood level over a day-long monitoring. Uh, we also drink sometime after or before the dinner. We can measure the alcohol. So here we stimulate the sweat. We measure sweat alcohol. Uh, here is a direct iontophoretic. We stimulate sweat. We have the enzyme alcohol oxidase and the modified electrode. And again, wireless communication to the phone. The same electronic, but in two minutes, it tells you how drunk you are, you see. You do one minute stimulation, one minute uh, detection, tell you you are drunk, don't drive. This validation with blood alcohol meter. These are the control, no drinking, no enzyme, no signal. So it's again two minutes to get you the level out drunk. And this is the same setup, the same electronic, but here we stimulate the sweat one minute, and then you detect it with the alcohol oxidase. And then we combine the two because when you go to dinner, you are eating and drinking. First you drink. So on the same tattoo, this is nice panda. This panda has two sensors, alcohol and glucose. So here we do simultaneously sweat alcohol and ISF glucose. When you do the iontophoretic, 
you stimulate the sweat and you get the alcohol, you have alcohol oxidants. Same time you have extracting the ISF and you have glucose here. That's why we call it glucose, glucose and alcohol. In five minutes, you get the glucose level and alcohol level using simultaneous measurement when you eat and drink. These are the control, no eating, no drinking. This is validation with glucose meter or blood alcohol meter. So it's the first example of monitoring two different biofluid non-invasive. ISF and a sweat using the same operation. We move a lot to personal nutrition and wellness. We work with a Swiss company, DSM, looking for their vitamin mineral, uh, the pandemic, vitamin C, vitamin D. Again, personal nutrition to see the profile. This is sweat, vitamin C profile, different subject. Every 20 minutes after taking the pill, the same pill, 1,000 milligram of vitamin C, you have ascorbic acid oxidase, stimulate the sweat, and we do every 20 minutes to see the profile are not identical, it's all about personal nutrition to guide the nutrition, guide you uh, wellness, uh, to give you feedback for supporting the diet behavior uh, to both, not only vitamin C, we do vitamin D, mineral, Z, on, all to personal nutrition using uh, Sweat is non-invasive. So here is the profile. This is amperometer. This is the ascorbic acid. Just stimulate the sweat for one minute. The signal every 45 minutes. Different profile. It go up and go down. Then it go to the baseline level after taking the P, 1,000 milligram of vitamin C. So the goal is again to get comprehensive information about metabolite, electrolyte potassium, sodium, uh, glucose, lactate, ketone, and so on, not only in sweat, also in ISF, in teals, in uh, saliva, and so on, to do it continuously, to track the nutrition and guide it uh, using your uh, uh, smartphone. Now, more, more recently, we also combined the chemical sensing with vital sun. We try to have multimodal modality, hybrid device, when you combine, let's say, blood pressure and uh, chemical sensing, we call it BPMN, this is collaboration with Sheng Shu, but we do the chemistry and the vital sign, or we uh, combine here, we do the ECD and artery with the chemistry, chemical monitoring, so by doing so, we get more comprehensive information, not only the biomarker, also the vital sign. Again, blood pressure, vital sign, temperature, uh, heart rate, and so all in a non-invasive, simultaneously integrating multimodality, chemical and physical, and activity. So by doing so, as I say, you get multi-parameter, both physical and chemical, comprehensive information, a single patch, all in a one device, and capturing information which is not available non-invasively. So here is the first study when we combine the ECG with the chemical monitoring. So here you see on a flexible substrate we have the ECG electrode and the chemical sensor, glucose, lactate, potassium, all is the ECG, the electronic combined, and then you do it as you see in this nature cam paper. Simultaneously the first example having vital with chemical on a single tattoo. And you can see the data here. These are the ECG data during the exercise. This is glucose, lactate, artery, different subjects. There is no cross talk. They're all flexible. The electronic control, both of them. There is no cross reactivity. And you capture this simultaneously. More recently, we combine it with blood pressure and artery. So, with the collaboration with Sheng Shu, we use, we use the acoustic ultrasound blood pressure monitor with our chemical monitoring. So with the acoustic, we capture the blood pressure monitoring non-invasive, and here we can measure ISF and sweat biomarker, like glucose and like lactate. So while we do the blood pressure, we can also stimulate the sweat or stimulate the ISF and get the complete information about, for example, daily activity. You have obesity or 
uh, hypertension, so people with obesity, also diabetic, you need to monitor the glucose, the blood pressure, and the heart rate. So again, this is simultaneously. As you see here, we can follow different daily activity. You, you exercise, you have the lactate going up. You have caffeine, the blood pressure go up. You can monitor lact lactate, caffeine, glucose. At the same time, you see the blood pressure and heart rate simultaneously. So this, uh, you can follow this daily activity. You see the device. These are the acoustic ultrasound for the blood pressure. This is ISF glucose. This is sweat lactate. All at the same time, you see they're all seemingly integrated. They are flexible. They are stretchable. There is no cross talk, as you see here. This you can see that uh, while we measure the blood pressure, you see you apply the electrochemical on and off. There is no cross talk. If we measure the electrochemistry and we apply the blood pressure on and off, there is no cross talk. Also, it's all stretchable, twistable, bendable. So is again, uh, you can survive without mechanical resiliency, no cross talk, measure simultaneously the chemistry, glucose, lactate, alcohol along with the blood pressure and so here is an example when you exercise you generate sweat lactate also the blood pressure go up and you can see at the same time this is the lactate level as you see you start to sweat the blood the lactate go up and down this is the maximum at the same time you see the blood pressure going up before the exercise the middle this is a at this time 800 uh, seconds, you see the lactate is maximum, the blood pressure maximum. Then you stop exercise, blood pressure going down, the lactate going, and it's all validated with a blood lactate meter and the standard uh, 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 blood pressure. Everything is validated. But you can do different activities. You can measure glucose, you can do caffeine, cortisol, not only lactate. So before the exercise, during and after, all validated with the gold standard. We also use the sweat uh, to generate uh, uh, the fingertip. In the fingertip, there is a lot of sweat, and we're using this touch-based technique that you don't need to exercise. You just capture the sweat, and you put a sensor with hydrogel, special hydrogel, to capture the sweat without any to stimulate the sweat. Oh. Oh, sweat in this part you have a lot of lot of sweat. This is different part of the body, but the sweat is number number six is the fingertip. You have much more sweat rate compared to others. You see the sweating in the finger as you take fingerprint because of this. So you have natural sweating, natural perspiration without any exercise or stimulation. So this is one example of uh, monitoring cortisol, cortisol using molecular imprinted. You touch the sensor and you see the nanomolar level, micromolar level of cortisol. You get it from the sweat uh, touch into the cavity of molecular imprinted. And you can follow a different time of the day, cortisol going up and down using this molecular imprinted sensor. Or we use it for Parkinson patient, and looking at level DOPA. When you take a pill of uh, DOPA, you touch and you don't want to do the pharmacokinetic. Every 10 minutes, the DOPA go up and down. You see the peak, maximum about 40 minutes after the pill. And you see the sweat follow the blood, there are only five minute delay compared to the blood, but very similar profile. And this is a control without the enzyme, the enzyme tyrosinase, or here is without the pill, here is without the enzyme. Here you take the pill, no enzyme. Here is uh, with the pill, but there is no enzyme. It's really nicely follow the blood level non-invasively. We also do personal nutrition, looking at glucose and ketone, also diabetic and nutrition. So we have two sensors, one for ketone and one for the glucose. You have 
one drink for ketone, you see ketone go up and down. This is a glucose-rich drink. The glucose go up and down, all validated as you publish here. We also do different devices like uh, sunglasses, gloves, and bandage. So with the sunglasses, we can monitor even tears. We can, we can stimulate the tears, and the tears will go onto the skin. And these uh, nice uh, glasses have uh, amperometric and potentiometric. Man, this I think, what is Dolce Cabana? Nice, uh, nice glasses. But we put the electronic. Here is the potentiometric, is amperometric. Here we have the amperometric enzyme electrode. This is potentiometric sodium and potassium. Then you see how you put it on the glasses. You can replace it every every day, and you can follow simultaneously the potassium and lactate. So here we have lactate oxidase. Here we have receptor for potassium. And simultaneously, you see the lactate profile and the, and the potassium profile. It can be applied both for sweat and also for tears. As I mentioned, uh, we have this nice smiley pH sensor. Normally, you measure the pH with this glass electrode for over one, 100 years. Everybody used this classical uh, glass pH sensor. Is very rigid, you don't want to put it on the skin. It will break, have a lot of HCL, there is inner solution. We use a solid contact without any inner solution. Solid contact which is printable based on polyanilin. Polyanilin is elective to the pH in this eye. And we have reference electrodes, so you have a nice smiley pH. Then you transfer it to the skin. Still smiling, you see the pH sensor. This is the reference electrode, and you can uh, bend it and twist it 50 times. This is after 50 bending, still smiling. You see this is many, many, many bending. This is the response before and after many, many bending like this. It's still responding and still smiling. The same for sodium. Sweat sodium is very important for hydration for uh, exercise and uh, other activity, nutrition. Again, this is a sodium ion selective electrode. This is typical what we will nurse and behavior. This is cross talk. And here again, we have 100 uh, stretching. Every 20 stretching, the same response. 100 stretching, 100 bending. You see bending it, severe strain. Every 20 we are measuring to get the sodium level. And this is all old stuff, eight years ago. We also move this to sweat fluidic. With the fluidic, we can uh, replenish have a continuous flow of the sweat. So you have four inlet, and when you exercise, the sweat is flowing over the detector to the exit. These are the inlet, exit, these are the sensor here, this is the electronic, wireless electronic, so you can replace and remove the sweat without any carryover. You can see here this exercise, we put a dye, and the dye is pushing the sweat, the sweat is pushing the dye over the detector. We remove the detector to the exit. And the sweat is pushing after 10 minutes and after 15 minutes. Then we place the, the sensor and you can measure the glucose or the lactate or electrolyte here is a lactate, so we have lactate oxidase here. There's the inlet, the three electrode. When you exercise 10 minutes, you get the sweat, and then you get the sweat lactate profile. Different subject, you can do the same for glucose. Or here we did it for electrolytes, so sodium and potassium. Two electrodes, one for sodium and one for potassium, ion selective. So you measure simultaneously Sodium potassium is a joint reference electrode. You can see it here, the sweat is pushing the dye over the electrode. You see the uh, way it's uh, moving and responding to the two electrodes. And this is being commercialized by a Swedish company in Malmö, in Sweden. 
this device uh, to smash wet metabolite is more for sport and uh, fitness. As a device, and we also do the stimulated the sweat uh, using the uh, the same uh, platform, but now instead of exercise, we stimulate the sweat. And you can see the dye is moving over the detector and use it for glucose monitoring. This is the glucose level. We move to textile, a lot of work on textile sensor and energy application. Again, different device, biofuel cell, biosensor, underwear, and socks, glove. This is the first work uh, 12 years ago, a sensor on the underwear. We print the uric acid, uric acid sweat. You can see we can twist it with the serpentine. We have a lot of stretchability. This is the biofuel cell for the fox, fox uh, sweat lactate. This is a different electrolyte on the, on the textile, on the underwear. Again, sodium and potassium simultaneously. All flexible, you have the elastomer, polyurethane, and carbon nanotube. And you can see, you stretch it, and this is during stretching, you see, before stretching, after stretching, you get the same response, stretching 200%, 300%, you measure the potassium at the same time, before and after the same for sodium. We do a lot of bandage for the wound healing. So this is, we want to see the condition of the wound. So different wound biomarker, uric acid and pH. These are important biomarkers for the wound condition. So we have the pH sensor to monitor the wound. pH, very important. The same polyaniline, we bending 100 times, bending the bandage. Here we have uric acid, is another wound biomarker. We have the enzyme uric acid, measuring the wound condition, always wireless communication. And we use this bandage also for cancer biomarker. So here we see the, the screening for cancer for melanoma. Uh, we have the enzyme, uh, in melanoma you have the enzyme tyrosinase is a good biomarker for melanoma. So we immobilize the substrate catechol. When you go to the skin check, you put the bandage in one minute, you can see if there is tyrosinase, this will convert the catechol to benzoquinone. You measure the benzoquinone. So in case of melanoma, in two minutes, you can screen based on the presence of tyrosinase by immobilizing the enzyme, all wireless. So it's quick screening for the cancer biomarker. We also going under the skin for micro needle. These are tiny micro needle, one millimeter uh, depth, so it's painless, minimally invasive, but it's completely painless. But the beauty, this is multiplex. You can have multiple needles for different biomarkers. Like here we have 12 needles. These are individually addressable needles. Each of them, you have different biomarkers, glucose, lactate, uric acid, pH, sodium. 12 of them simultaneously, all on one centimeter. This is 12 millimeter, 1.2 centimeter square. Individually addressable, minimally invasive for multiplex detection of multiple electrolyte and metabolite. So this is the early where the company BioLink now commercializing. These are all of micro needles. We mobilizing the enzyme in the pest, carbon pest, like glucose oxidase, to see the response in vitro for glucose, 1 to 15 millimolar glucose using the glucose oxidase in the pest. Or here we have the selectivity for glucose, present ascorbic acid, uric acid, acetaminophen. There is no interference with so highly sensitive, effective. And we can use it also to power, uh, use it as a self-powered biofuel cell. The two needles acting as a biofuel cell. This is the anode for glucose fuel. This is for oxygen, a cathode. So you can harvest energy, and the energy is proportional to the glucose fuel. So it's a self-powered sensor. The uh, power is proportional to the fuel. 
Now, the goal is to have multiplex. We do a lot of diabetic monitoring for multiple diabetic biomarkers, ketone, insulin, glucose. So this is a, again, 10 millimeter, one centimeter diameter, four different biomarkers, alcohol, lactate, ketone, and glucose, different enzyme, joint reference. Code. And you can see here, this is just publishing in uh, Nature Diabetic, Nature Review, but a needle of eight different sensors, insulin, uh, ketone, glucagon, or cortisol. All of these are important biomarkers for closed loop. So in closed loop uh, for artificial pancreas, you want to get as much information. So it's not only glucose or ketone, also cortisol effect, ketone, insulin, it's all coming soon in this uh, Nature Journal. Here is an example of uh, glucose and ketone. Ketone is extremely important for ketoacidosis, also for keto diet. So here it's a different enzyme, uh, hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. This is more complicated than glucose oxidase because you need to immobilize NAD plus to avoid leaching, you have a mediator. So here is the response of the hydroxybutyrate, the ketone, is the immobilize NAD plus. NAD plus and HB dehydrogenase. This is the glucose simultaneously. We also use the microneedle for Parkinson monitoring. We have the enzyme tyrosinase, and this is levodopa again. You can measure it enzymatically. One needle is the enzymatic. You can see the calibration and the stability. And another one is direct oxidation of dopa. So you have orthogonal detection, parallel. Direct oxidation, you see nice calibration, micromolar level stability. And this is enzymatic by So we are now integrating all this sensing with the electronic. You can see this electronic and the battery, and this is the enclosure, nano power lab, nano bioelectronic. So these are four, again, four microneedle, but one centimeter, and total is 1.5 centimeter diameter, all the electronic for multiplex detection, wireless communication, we'll have the battery. So this is a fully integrated with the battery, wireless communication, selected alcohol, glucose, and so on. And you see the all uh, fully integrated sensor for multiplex detection. See this. So this is the high degree of integration. The two parts, one part is reusable, the electronic and the battery are reusable, the sensor is disposable one day, three days, you put it with the battery, recharge, wireless communication, it looks like this, to run simultaneous measurement, you see, can disposable sensor for one or two, three days, reusable electronic for multiplex wireless detection, CWS in our center of wearable. So, and then you see the multiplex detection and validation. So we see different daily activity. On the top is what we go, tonight we're going to dinner, huh? we are drinking and eating. So this is the alcohol sensor. And this is all validated. You see the individual point is the validation. So this is the continuous, the blue is the alcohol level, you have the drink. At, uh, before the dinner, you have a cocktail and you, the alcohol going up, and then you get the meal, the cheesecake, glucose go up and down. It's all validated. You get very good correlation to blood glucose, blood alcohol. Here is another example. Here we have different activity. We want to look lactate and glucose. So lactate we exercise. You see, we exercise before the dinner. You see the lactate go up and down, and these are the blood lactate meter. So blood lactate is very good correlation all the way. But after you stop to exercise, it's going down. And then you take the meal, and look to, uh, glucose go up and down again, all correlated and validated. So again, this is a four-minute exercise. You see the activity. And the sensor is where this is six hours, five, six hours, different activity eating and drinking, exercise and eating, and you can follow multiple parameters. We have three spin-off companies that uh, 
already lies in the first generation is BioLink in the La Hoya, they do the diabetic, the glucose, this is the Nootromic in Australia, they're putting Aptamer for the drug monitoring. This is our new company in San Diego, Equilix, on the last paper on Nature Biomedical. So it's a very exciting topic. Now, energy is very important, how to power this device. You know, you have a very small sensor, you don't want to carry a big solar cell or big battery. So we try to meet the energy demand, the power requirement. And we are combining different energy harvester and different energy storage to have a complete control of the energy demand. Independent, flexible device was harvesting for sweat, lactate, or movement, and a supercapacitor and battery, all in a microgrid. So this is a biofuel cell that harvests energy from sweat lactate. There is a lot of lactate in sweat. It's a very effective biofuel cell. You can get one or two milliwatt. Oxygen is the cathode. You do it on textile or on the skin. You see it's very stretchable. Even while you stretch, you get the power. This is while you stretch, 300% stretching the power. It powers the watch. And you see the beautiful, the power is proportional to the glucose. So it is self-power. It's a self-power glucose sensor. But the power is really proportional to the amount of the glucose fuel. And it's all stretchable, and you measure it during the stretch of the stability. Repeated stretching does not affect the uh, uh, power harvesting. And more recently, we make, uh, to increase the power density, we use this island bridge, this pellet, pellet of lactate oxidase with carbon nanotube. This is island bridge. The bridge are for copper serpentine. And this can give you two milliwatt per centimeter square. So it's high power. And you see the power during the exercise, more than one milliwatt, flexible, stretchable, power different devices. Here is a for power in the LED, for example. So during the exercise, we can power the watch, the power of the LED, hitting the energy demand, two milliwatt per centimeter square. Even from the fingertip, I told you, you, get, you don't need to exercise, you just touch and you get the sweat lag, even while you're sleeping tonight. You can dream and you get the power of dreaming, huh? Dream power, we call it. Eight hours, you get four, 500 millijoule, just keeping this uh, biofuels while you're sleeping. Or you're just touching the, uh, the mouse of your laptop, you can get repeated touch. Dream power, huh? You don't invest anything. Day long monitor without any mechanical good. So this got a lot of attention, was a feature by science and nature. See, while you sleep, the device harvests your energy. You can see the multiple uh, biofuels on the fingertip, all while you are sleeping. And we also combine the energy harvesting with energy storage on textile. This is textile supercapacitor with the biofuel cell. One side is the biofuel cell touching the skin. Other side is the supercapacitor. This is the biofuel cell. This is supercapacitor. Specially device, also stretchable. You can see the stretchability on the textile. One side is the biofuel cell. This is supercapacitor. You stretch it, you bend it, you push it, you twist it, you see the biofuel cell. And you can store the sweat energy by the supercapacitor. For you, here is the biofuel cell, large area, also serpent. Catch the serpent, bend it, and so on. We also work on flexible battery for energy storage in a supercapacitor. These are zinc silver oxide battery, high power battery, rechargeable with high aerial capacitor. It we reported in these two papers. They are again highly stretchable and high capacity. So we are trying to combine all of this and the multimodality. We take the harvester and the storage, 
and we get a microgrid, a grid on the body to control and meet the energy demand continuously. This is a recent paper where we have the biofuel cell around with the lactate oxidase and then the zinc interoxide battery. And you have multiple sensors. So we're charging the battery, the biofuel cell, and then discharging the battery. The battery, the middle, these are the biofuel cell. You get two milliwatt, you can store it and you can apply it. You wake up in the morning, you power the different sensor, you have microcontroller. You get extended energy combining the two. Here is another example on the textile. So here again, you have a different harvester, you have mechanical energy, a tribal energy for movement, biochemical energy for sweat, and you have the storage, the battery, biofuel cell. So you always have energy anytime, complementary synergistic. So independent, if you exercise, you not exercise, you get the mechanical energy, TNG. Initially, when you start to exercise, you have the mechanical energy. Then the sweat starts, and you get the biochemical energy. You combine the two. Then you stop and you stop exercise, you stop the mechanical, you still have uh, biochemistry. So you continue have uh, energy. And then we combine this with a display recently, the cover of Nature Electronic. This patch have the battery, the biofuel cell, multiple sensor, also the display with this pixel, the electrochromic display where you see the level of lactate, five millimole lactate. This is the individual layer with the exploited views. So we have the, the batteries, you see the battery here, you have the sensor, my controller, the display, the battery, this is the cell, these are the sensor all. Individually, you can stretch it, you can bend it. Rapidly displaying, you see this wet lactate, six millimolar here on the pixel, you touch here and you see and you see the battery microcontroller, the small sensor. You can stretch it, you can visualize the data without any connection, no electronic, all independent. So, overall, as I say, 55 minutes, we showed that we can monitor, capture molecular information, different biofluid, non invasively, for personal nutrition, wellness, medicine, and combine it with energy powering. For medicine. So we thank the people, we have a large group, about 40 people, dedicated students, postdoc, visitors, that work on both uh, micro robot and a wearable sense of energy sensing application. These so are the people who did this work, 20 people. Fun. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Any question? Please, yeah. They all, yeah, they all uh, well validated for two decades now. Yeah. Also, the sweat, once the person correction, a very good correlation.
Okay, so they use the same printable device for uh, harvesting battery, different things. Battery we use zinc, peroxide, but the biofuel cell is like electrochemical. So I mean, on textile we can print the energy. So there is no, uh, all need to be biocompatible, non-toxic, obviously. But the same like the same biofuels and the same requires. And these are all good questions. So you have to consider everything, biocompatibility, especially you go under the skin with micro needle, anything you put in the skin, on the skin also, everything you put in the mouth or in your teeth, all need to be biocompatible and non So first of all, we select the material to ensure they're all biocompatible, but you still need to do all the clinical testing to validate there is no leaching in the sensor. Even on the skin, you want to ensure if it's biocompatible, not only for stability, leaching also affects the stability, so the toxicity. Mediator can be. The enzymes are usually not toxic, but some material are there. So we always do the toxicity with biocompatibility. Okay, so this is the future is bright, you see, you're already in diabetic. <laughs> the first example, you see the diabetic already over a decade. We have CGM is Ebo, Dexcom, and Metronic, leading. So the, the, glucose is the best platform we, we all, because of the market, but the same technology can be applied to stress monitoring, like cortisol, or sport and wellness, like lactate, cortisol, Electrolyte, there is a big market. Obviously, diabetic, diabetic is the biggest one. But even in diabetics, they want to monitor insulin, want to monitor ketones, so not only glucose, for so good artificial pancreas, you want to have multiple biomarkers. So the insulin, lactate, and all. There is a good thing. Yeah, one question. Yes, so enzymatic reactions are reversible. There is no problem. They have continuous molecules. As long as the enzyme is stable, the enzyme can degrade high temperature. Arizona, the enzyme will die at two hours at degree. The lab, the enzymes are very stable. The enzymes are reversible. Your antibody are not reversible. To ELISA, you need washing, adding the secondary. So ELISA is not compatible on body. That's why we use Aptamer. Aptamer can do bioaffinity, yes, and they are reversible. Conformation to insulin or cortisol. Instead of immunoassay, we use Aptamer. For electrolyte, we use ionophore. They are reversible. Potassium, potassium. They are the main receptor. Enzyme, ionophore for electrolyte. We both do molecular implanted and no, not always uh, reversible, and the optimum fully reversible. Some of the earlier I show you the flexible electronic on polyamide. The electronic board was on polyamide. It was relatively put on the micro needle we don't have problem. All the micro needle at the enclosure and there is no problem. It's only ten millimeter diameter. Already on the skin, you don't stretch the micro. The one on the skin 
inflexible is polyamory. Not stretchable, but at least it's and you don't have more than five percent ability. You don't need to. Time we put the electron island bridge. The electron is the island, the serpent, the bridge. Question that here, no, here's a good one. Everything we try to validate, if we do alcohol, we have blood alcohol. If we do lactate, we have a blood lactate meter. Every data, if it's ISF or spread, always validate and compare to the gold standard. Our glucose is all correlated. We look at the profile alcohol. Everything we do must, in order to apply it for biomedical, they keep everything. And we want to validate and to make it relevant. Yeah, with the needle, we can use some of the needle to deliver the drugs. Glucose, uh, you can do based on the glucose, you can deliver insulin and so on. No, we have multiple needles. It's not only two needles. We, we will use for biofuel cell uh, maybe 40 needles, 20 for the cathode, 20 for the end. And this is more for sensing application. We just want to measure the cell power. It's the one really, uh, one, two milliwatt, we use it on the skin. But under the skin, you can get 200 microwatt. And this is the, you have to have a self power sensor. So this is enough for self power sensor. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll be keeping touch.